some of the technology was adopted almost immediately before I even started. People were buying consumer drones and figuring out a way to use them as a tool on the farm. And by and large, that's still where much of the farm use is. Um, it's very it's very much the lowbrow aspect, not collecting high-end data and doing artificial intelligence, but simply getting an eye in the sky and seeing parts of the farm that are that you otherwise would have a hard time accessing. I estimate about 25 to 30 percent of farms have a, have a drone that they use it to some degree on the farm. Landview drones began back in 2016 after using drones in farmland valuation. But the founders soon recognized the widespread potential for the technology to explode in agriculture. So we sell equipment and then enable farmers to use it. We, we provide the training uh, so that they can fly legally and so that they actually understand how to use that equipment to its full uh, potential. For people that are tech savvy, they can unbox it and learn to use it themselves in an hour or two quite effectively. For people that are a little wary of using technology or even using apps on their phone to full potential, going to a school and do, learning that in person makes some sense. Um, there is one really good reason for everybody to go to a school though and that's the regulations. Uh, Transport Canada in 2019 changed all the regulations and really made it much simpler. It, it isn't a big barrier. Everybody needs to understand the law around the drone use before they're allowed to fly them essentially is what it is. And because of that you should know the drone laws so that you can pass a test for a basic certificate. There are a lot of people flying without one and it's a complaints-based system right now, so they're often not getting into trouble, but it is important if they're flying anything with any size, anything over 250 grams, that they get a basic certificate at the very least to be able to operate it legally. There are only a few manufacturers that are capturing the bulk of the market. There's, there's one manufacturer that has 85% of this market right now, um, and that's primarily what we're selling, um, but they release a new model every six to 12 months too. So. Uh, people get a little frustrated with their drone that they bought two years ago already being obsolete, but that's how quickly the technology is moving. There's always a new model that can do what we need on the farm even better. Um, so things like rain fastness are here now. I wouldn't have imagined that when I started seven years ago, um, that we could fly in the rain with both the controller and the drone being waterproof. Um, we've got that minus 20 to plus 50 for weather extremes. Uh, we can zoom in 200 times, so we can we can literally read ear tags from 300 feet away. Um, the capabilities, depending on the use that you're going to put it to, are definitely there, and there's there's a drone for you. And the uses for drones pretty much limitless. Weber says, in fact, daily chores for the drone are done most often by cattle producers. The most common use is just putting a drone up in the air, figuring out where the cows are before you drive into that pasture. So you're not driving around aimlessly looking for them for the first portion, you go straight to where the cows are. That's an easy example and people kind of get that. But the automation that's possible with these makes things just so much uh, beyond what people think they're currently capable of. A consumer drone can now be programmed in one automated flight every morning to go check every water, take a picture of every water, uh, fly around that circle of, of um, heifers and bring back a video of that and, I don't know, maybe check the front gate and make sure it's locked. The drone can bring back a mixture of photo and video in a whole bunch of different flight paths and the user inter uh, interface is basically just hitting a start button every morning to get that kind of data back. Um, and then on the crop side, we have multi-spectral cameras that can see what we can't see with the human eye. So, I mean, there is also the lowbrow stuff, just get up and you see your farm in a brand new light. You see all the problems, frankly. You fall out of love with your crop when you see it from the air because you see every type of kind of problem, whether it's soil or water related or something you've done with your equipment. Um, all of those become really obvious. But where these really shine is when you start using sensors that use near infrared light or red edge light and they show crop stress and crop health. You can use that to create a prescription. You now can use drones to apply a prescription. Still some limitations around the pesticide thing uh, aspect of that, but if you want to apply fertilizer, fertilizer prescriptions, the technology is absolutely there to do that now. Uh, by far the hottest this year is spraying. Um, there are regulatory barriers to that, but people are looking at the low cost of hardware for spraying by drone and its unique uh, benefits, like not trampling crop, like being able to spray effectively on very rough pastures, 
and really wanting to get into spraying. Wanting to, not getting into, because we are still needing to provide some evidence as an industry that, the, that it is safe to do that. There are some potential risks around drift that we need to iron out and figure out what kind of spray quality we can get out of these drones. On the spraying side, we need to lift a lot of weight. And in order to do that, we're gonna have very limited uh, flight time with the batteries we have. So the systems already now will let you swarm, in theory, up to five drones. So one operator could be flying five drones um, and spraying out of a, a, a pasture. There's some practical realities around actually using three of them. I mean, in theory, and it looks great to use five, but three is probably the practical maximum because there is still a lot of work to do to swap batteries and swap water. And that will take some labor. So there's a, there's a labor to hardware cost trade-off there. This will become a standard farm tool. I mean, how many of us would have imagined that we'd have little computers, right? We've got computers and cameras that we carry around with us all day, and we use it all the time to get information, take a picture of a weed, send it off to the Twitterverse, and we have a diagnosis. Well, it's gonna be a tool like this. Everybody's gonna have one on the farm. And today, that's scouting drones. But five years from now, mapping and application drones will be just as common on the farm.